Daily Driven 392 back in town after 10 day trip away. Got just over 33,000 miles South Florida up into the Blue Ridge and Smokies, North Carolina, and back roads through North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, and all over. I took a more direct route up there, but once I got up in that general area, I was all over. So the first day I did about 12 hours of straight driving, stopped for about an hour and a sleep, and then continued on. That entire day, I was driving through the Smokies and Blue Ridge on trails. I stopped a couple times for fuel and to eat here and there. If I saw something cool on the trails, I'd stop. But for the most part, I was continuously driving. So I pretty much drove straight from 7.30 of a Thursday night well into Friday evening before I stopped to sleep. So the vehicle was running pretty much the whole time. The 392 was stellar on the highway. Exactly what I needed and what I expected from this vehicle when it was up on the highway. Unlike my usual driving, I drove most of the time in regular drive mode and not an off-road plus which typically down here when I'm in traffic and around I'm driving an off-road plus but because I was doing so many highway miles I wanted to stick with the regular drive mode well at least we're hitting some hills it's definitely better than that stinking highway with all this traffic I'd rather be out here I averaged 14.6, which is my normal average around town when I'm in off-road plus, to the highest that I saw, which was 16.3. Twenty twenty-two, three ninety-two, a non-XR running 35s. So I'm sure that gearing had something to do with it. I did notice that my gauges my dash gauges were extremely optimistic when it comes to the MPG because I was constantly a gallon to a gallon and a half lower than what it was, what the MPG was saying it was. And again, it could be all due to the gearing. I haven't changed the gearing and I went up to 35s on a non-XR. So everything was pretty, uh, Everything was pretty calm. Didn't have any issues really with the vehicle. It was it was a stellar performer the whole way it was there. Uh, through the mountains, on the trails, on the highway. Very stable, very accurate. There was no big surprises. And I did a lot of driving. On the way back, I made it a point to not take the highway. So I went back ways most of the way. The vehicle handled well. I got into Florida, maybe about four hours from home. It was monsooning out. And I started noticing that when I stopped for gas, it seemed like there was a, a resistance when I was hitting the gas pedals, the only way to describe it. Like something was holding back, almost like the brakes were on, but the brakes weren't on. And it was really raining hard. I mean, monsooning and their water was ponding heavily on the roads. So I just assumed and attributed it to the fact that I was driving through walls of water. Up on the highway, I didn't notice anything different. A Couple hours after I stopped for gas, I stopped to get some coffee and noticed that it wasn't raining and I still felt this odd resistance type feeling. Resistance to movement, forward movement. And I don't know how else to describe it because it wasn't like I was stopped. It just felt different. And when you've done 30,000 miles on a car and a year in, you know, three months or whatever, you, you understand, you tend to, at least I personally, tend to become one with my vehicles. You know, I, I bond with my vehicles. I know the sounds I know that it typically makes and something just didn't feel right. It's the only way I can really describe it. A resistance 
Not strong, but strong enough where it just didn't feel right. So when I got home, the next day, I started checking things. Before I left, I had a, a little over 28,000, almost 29. I checked the brakes, replaced the pads. I replaced the front and rear diff covers with AEVs, changed out the fluids, obviously. But the one thing I didn't check was my transfer case. You know, the service manual calls for an inspection at, I think it was 50,000. I decided that I was gonna check my transfer case. This is my own fault because before I left, weeks before I left, I did a video where I even mentioned the fact that Trail Recon had mentioned that his transfer case had to be replaced at 35,000 miles. He does a lot of off-roading, hardcore off-roading in the mountains, trailering stuff. I attribute it to the fact that he's probably harder on his vehicle than most people are, or than a lot of people. While I was away, from, I started seeing more and more people having issues with their transfer cases. When I changed my diff covers, I noticed that front diff was really low on fluid, not even half full. And the number of instances and cases where I'm seeing people reporting that their fluids and their factory fills are low. My transfer case was a quart low with no visible sign of leakage. When I opened it up, I could instantly tell it was burned. On one of the posts that I made, somebody had commented about the TRX forums. I went and checked them out and sure enough, there's reports of them having the same issue. Lots of factory fills being low. I would highly advise anybody, anybody out there that has a 392 or even just possibly a Jeep, double check your fluids. If you've ever smelled burned up fluid and fluid that's been cooked, you know what it smells like. It's very distinct. And as soon as I pulled the cap, I knew. I knew I was in trouble when I couldn't even feel it when I pulled off the fill cap. Nothing. In the, and before I went on my trip, I didn't check the transfer case and I should have. The vehicle has been very good to me, so let's hope this streak continues. I didn't see any metallic pieces or any metal in the, the transfer case fluid. No indications that something got destroyed, but still, check your fluid levels from the factory. And I'd be curious as to where some other people are. My front was low. Probably half of what I put in came out. I know when I checked it and reached into the front diff, I couldn't feel anything with my finger. The transfer case I did check and it was almost a full quart low. No signs of leakage, nothing. So I'm redoing my transfer case fluid. I just did about a 4,000 mile road trip. Fluid was burned up. I changed it, but I wanted to, to flush it and change it one more time before I leave on my next trip coming up in a few weeks. I removed the skid from underneath the transfer case and I flushed it and what I found worked great was these HDX hand pumps from Home Depot. Pulled off the end, I was able to easily maneuver everything in position and flushed it both from here and then from the drain port. I was able to get in there and really rinse things good. Like I had mentioned earlier in the video, when I first drain this, so right now, this is the third quart, and I used probably a half a quart to flush it. So it takes around two quarts, a little over two quarts. When I originally checked it, I got less than three quarters of a quart of fluid came out of this transfer case with the stock fill. That means this thing was a quart short from the factory fill, a quart. That's why I'm highly advising people to check it. It's, I've never had issues with 13 Jeeps now. I've never had issues with transfer cases. So after what happened on this last trip, I want to be 100% sure all my fluids are proper and that I don't have anything strange going on. I'm going to let this drain, clean everything up really nice, put it all back together. And as of right now, everything seems to be functioning as I would expect it to. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to continue that way. 
and I want something on record, but I highly recommend Check Your Fluid, Factory Fills. Again, why I like to do everything I can myself. Remember, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Help me defeat the YouTube algorithm.